parents, we put money aside for our kids that didn't have technology at home. And guess what? Bring your own device, you no longer ask questions that kids give really answers to. Technology to prove what we do. All right, devices need to support learning, not drive instruction. If devices are driving instruction, wrong focus. Okay, real quick, where are you on here? Are you a disconnected nomad? Connected learner, collaborative learner? Let me show you how learning changes. If you're here, a disconnected nomad, that's you. One way flow. When you use social media, watch how your learning changes. Two way flows. I've connected with so many people here at Beck, I got off the plane yesterday. We've done it all before, oh, we've done it all before with updated tools. Now we got this tool. There's my secret, don't share this. That's me, social media, I connect to smart people. Do I have these two minutes? Two minutes, okay. Stay with me, real quick. Communication has changed. We've gone from localized mass broadcast, mass dialogue. This is what your parents, your community wants to know. Do they know what's going on in your schools? You all want to know. So as you think about it, meet your stakeholders where they're at. They're in social media, they're on social media. Real time, two way. One to three tweets a day, that's my school, former school. Facebook, totally open. We even had the kids create our own school app. The kids did it. Push notifications. Do you tell your story? Don't leave your PR to chance. Bad news will happen. Become the storyteller in chief. All this great stuff. Why is it important? Ah, uh, yeah, that's another New York City news. You got video tools, pictures. How about creating your own iconic images? This was after a major hurricane hit New York City. You might have heard of Hurricane Sandy. That's what my kids did. Cleaned up the beach, found an American flag, shared it. Oh, results. First time ever. New Jersey is number two in America for student achievement. First time we were one of the top four public schools. 1,026 out of 26,000 schools for achievement during our digital transformation. Yeah, yeah, look at all this awesome stuff. If you don't vlog, I vlogged about my teachers. I'm gonna stop and I'll finish my slides at the end. Perfect. To save some time for some questions, to a question I want to ask, which is, say you're a classroom teacher and you're in school, um, but your head or your principal <coughs> is a bother, or in fact it's worse, what do you do? I don't think we make leaders digital. Leadership is leadership. Leadership has not changed. Your focus is the same. How well do you communicate? How well do you model? Are you cognizant of what goes on in your classrooms? Do you hold people accountable? How do you build respect? How do you build relationships? The natural synergy is using the tools of 2017 and beyond to support good leadership. Hey, you want to see what? Can I go back to my slides for a minute? Because I had a slide to answer that question. And if they put it back up. I quickly talked about this is what you do. Why would you not want to become better at what you do? It's not about learning all the tools. That's not digital leadership. Digital leadership is knowing that you can become better using the right tool for the right task, extending your message. You want to know why I got free stuff in my school? Because we use social media and we share, share, share. We bragged. Yeah, we bragged. But don't think brag is a bad thing, because guess what? You should brag about your kids. You should brag about your teachers. You should brag about each other. Marvelous. Um, has anyone got any questions? talked about uh, letting kids make decisions and BYOD. Do you think, uh, just in, I know we're kind of talking a little bit about the technology here, 
but uh, do you think where kids bring any device that they're comfortable with, whatever that device is, is a better model than having all... Oh, oh my goodness, now that is a tough question. So the question was, do I feel that kids should bring the device they're comfortable with, or should we give them all the device? Here's the thing, we didn't have the money to go one to one. I, I wanted to. I almost got Toshiba to give us 800 Chromebooks for free, this close. But I think it's really what's best for your community, your culture. Your culture is different than mine. Do you know your kids? Do you know your staff? Here's what Bring Your Own Device taught us. We learn about an array of free tools that can be used on any single device. When I do workshops with leaders, I put up a slide about 20 tools that not even ever heard before, all free. And I give you 45 minutes to learn how to use the tool. Then, all right, show me how a teacher would develop pedagogically sound lesson using that tool. What would the assessment like? So I think for us, bringing on the device taught us not only how to create better lessons, better assessments, but our kids were comfortable and then we bought more technology in our school. We had Chromebook cards, iMac lab, so we had all these different systems. So it really depends on your culture. And if I had the money, I would have gone one to one. But I didn't. It's catch 22. Create a culture around non evaluative visits to generate discussion and improvement around teaching and learning with empty. Yeah, I think building trust is important because, you know, when it's not evaluative, the teachers have to know if, they, if you use that against them, I'm sorry, your relationship is destroyed. And we made it very, very clear with the feedback we gave our teachers in our walks. We had for five minutes and said, hey, here's what you're doing great. Here's what you can do to improve. And we set them up for success on their formal evaluations because we had a five standard room, tons of substandards, artifacts in line. When we came in unannounced for an observation, they knew. And I'll tell you right now, if you do the dog and pony show, if your teachers know you're coming in to observe them, that's not demanding excellence. So I think building that culture of trust is they have to know. We didn't use that to fire teachers. I fire teachers who got caught shopping during the school day, who couldn't get to school on time, who didn't turn their lesson plans and assessments in, who were insubordinate. I didn't fire teachers for instruction because we worked really hard to improve that. But if a teacher's bad in the classroom, they're probably bad at other things. Same thing with the leaders. Same thing with leaders. Uh, in the UK at least, where uh, education budgets being squeezed quite hard, and uh, people are worrying about what they should cut. What do you recommend school leader does in an environment where budgets being squeezed? and all this stuff got so much money. Well, I told you in my school, we had no money. We have to think differently about the money we do have. In 2008, when the markets crashed across the world, I lost a fifth of my staff. We got it back in over the years, but here's the deal. Look at how you're spending money. There's so much waste. Since I did the budget, I went through it and funneled money to a technology account. Bring your own device, save us money. That's why we went that way. But then the money that we did have, we talked about all this, our maker space, which I showed earlier, 3D printers, making makies. We were spending money on online databases that kids didn't use. We looked at our budget, we freed up $16,000 by reallocating the funds. So I asked all of you, look at how you spend money. Do you keep buying the same things over and over again? Or do you hold people accountable for how they're spending it? We also got donations, why? Because this is the stuff we shared and shared and shared. This became our brand presence. Alumni, I had alumnus walk in my, alumni walk in my office, give me a check for $10,000. Why? because he found out what we were doing on Facebook. Companies gave us tens of thousands of dollars of technology. Why? Because we shared, shared, and shared. Here's the bottom line. If opportunity doesn't knock, build a door. 
You're right, budgets are tight, but guess what? Excuse, you will never have enough money. No schools have enough money. I think that is a marvelous way to finish what has been a brilliant and fascinating presentation. Eric, you're gonna stick around and answer some questions? Yep, and you guys can just leave that slide up for a few minutes so everyone can get it. This is the, okay, scan the code, case sensitive link, or take a picture of the slide and do it later. All my notes are there, hyperlinks, all the videos I didn't get a chance to show because I'm not very good with time. You gotta do a three question survey to access. And I'm around. Brilliant. Eric, thank, thank you, you very much. Can everyone join me in saying thank you?